Hello everyone, this is T.W. Cook, National Sea Scout Commodore. I'm sure by now you've seen the announcement of the new agreement between the Sea Scouts and the Coast Guard Auxiliary, making Sea Scouts the official youth program of the Coast Guard Auxiliary. And you've probably been wondering about how your council can take advantage of that. I'd like to talk to you about that today. If you look at the essence, Sea Scouts is at the core a combination of scouting, our well-established scout values and ways of working with youth, and seamanship the technical skills about boat operation and safety. This relationship makes a lot of sense because it combines the leaders in both. Who better to provide the expertise in scouting than the Boy Scouts of America? And who better to provide the expertise in seamanship than the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary, with more than 800 flotillas nationwide, more than 25,000 members, and an and intimate working relationship with the U.S. Coast Guard? Working together brings the best of both worlds together to revitalize and expand our Sea Scout program, for the benefit of youth, the Coast Guard, and the Boy Scouts of America. Sea Scouts today is a high adventure co-ed maritime program for our youth that are 14 or 13 and finish the eighth grade to 20. At the core are the four S's, scouting, service, seamanship, and social. It's a top level program of the BSA, like Cub Scouts, Scouts BSA and Venturing. Our units are called ships. Our unit leaders are called skippers. If you haven't looked at Sea Scouts in a while, your impression may be outdated. If this is what you think of when we talk about Sea Scouts, it's probably time to take another look. There have been a lot of changes over the past decade in Sea Scouts. The biggest one is the embracing of paddlecraft, kayaks, canoes, paddleboard, rafts, and etc. as an advancement truck and a program focus. Much of our growth has been inland, small boat based, whether sailboats or paddlecraft. We have discontinued the Navy uniforms in favor of new uniforms that are more like Scouts, less like the Navy. We've really worked to realign ourselves with our BSA roots organizationally and culturally. At the core, we're really scouts with boats. We've also tried to develop a volunteer infrastructure led by council commodores, area commodores, and regional commodores to help us grow the program across the country and to provide expertise in places where councils don't have it. Sea Scouts today are viable everywhere. A lot of our ships thrive far inland on lakes and rivers. Saltwater is absolutely not required. Sea Scouts are easiest with paddlecraft. Paddlecraft-based ships are inexpensive, they're high adventure but low risk, and most scoutmasters and assistant scoutmasters can transition to be skippers. We're certainly not just about sailboats anymore. You can use powerboats, paddlecraft. We have ships that focus on scuba, of course sailing. We also have ships that focus on swimming or other aquatic activities. And we're a full program of the BSA, no longer a part of venturing. Starting a ship really isn't harder than starting any other kind of unit. You need the same ingredients. You need a charter organization. You need an initial program focus, whether that's paddlecraft, sailboats, whatever. You need some adult leadership. Former scoutmasters or assistant scoutmasters are good candidates. And you need some youth who want to have fun on the water. The process is really no different than any other kind of unit. So why should you care about Sea Scouts? You may have seen the study that was published this summer about retention in BSA where we discovered that on average, a youth that enrolls in an older scout program, whether Sea Scouts are venturing, extends their stay in BSA by another 17 months. Our statistics show that we've lost half of our scouts BSA youth by the time they reach Sea Scout age. So the opportunity to retain them for longer really helps us in membership, and it also gives us more opportunity to fulfill our mission, instilling in them the values of the scout oath and the scout law. We can also appeal to root youth we might not otherwise reach. There are plenty of youth out there that are not so excited by camping and hiking, but who think that boating or aquatic activities really sound like fun. We can certainly create opportunities for youth that are interested in maritime careers. The maritime schools these days have 99% job placement, so it's a great job track. Sea Scout Quartermaster is a huge advantage for a youth that's headed toward the Coast Guard, the Navy, or the Merchant Marines. We also have the opportunity for great community visibility. A focus on aquatic safety and high adventure uh, gets good press and is highly visible. And lastly, we're creating a youth resource that's valuable to both our councils and our communities. Youth that are skilled sailors and boaters are really handy to have around for scout troops, for running summer camp aquatics programs, and a lot of things we do in scouting. So let's talk a little about the Coast Guard Auxiliary. The Coast Guard Auxiliary is the volunteer side of the U.S. Coast Guard. Their primary mission is recreational boater safety, there are more than 800 of the local flotillas or units around the country, 25,000 members. They work hand-in-hand -hand with the active duty Coast Guard. And their activities are very broad, but they include butter safety and skills training, safety patrols, search and rescue, marine safety 
inspections, public awareness, etc. They have a major focus right now on paddlecraft safety because paddlecraft represent the fastest growing segment of the boating industry. So the big opportunity that we have is that auxiliary flotillas and divisions are now encouraged to charter Sea Scout ships. They can't charter packs or troops, but they can charter ships. In addition to that, our youth Sea Scouts, who are at least 14, can become full members of the Coast Guard Auxiliary, even if they're not in a ship that's chartered to the Auxiliary. That is the only way that someone under 17 can join the Auxiliary, but that gives them the ability to participate in training, qualifications, and operations, just like any other Auxiliarist. The Auxiliary is divided into districts, not unlike our regions, but smaller, divisions, which are sort of like councils, and into local units that are called flotillas. The auxiliary is made up of volunteers, just like the BSA, but they do have supervision and they have to seek approval for legal agreements from the active duty Coast Guard, just like we volunteers in BSA need to seek approval from our BSA professionals. The most imp important active duty approver is the district's director of auxiliary or DIROX. That's the person that has to approve chartering organizations. You'll also hear the term AUX Scout, which is the auxiliary's name for this program and our relationship. It's not a new scouting program. It's simply their name for the Coast Guard Auxiliary Sea Scout relationship. It's really important that you do not contact the active duty Coast Guard directly. Our relationship is with the Coast Guard Auxiliary. They, in turn, have their relationship with the Coast Guard, and we have to work through them. So contact your local Coast Guard Auxiliary, not your local Coast Guard. So what should a council do? The most important thing is to appoint a council Sea Scout Commodore. That's just the Sea Scout Committee Chair, and it's the key point of contact for the Coast Guard Auxiliary and for Sea Scouts in general. It's okay if it's not an experienced Sea Scout. Commissioners make great candidates because they understand about how to start and grow units. That point of contact needs to reach out to the local flotillas to determine if there's interest, and if there is, to guide them through our unit start process. This matters to us because it represents opportunities for our youth and for our councils. Sea Scout growth has been limited by a lack of adult leaders with useful experience. This provides access to several hundred new potential charter partners across the country and to thousands of skilled adults who are potential Sea Scout leaders. The result of that is a positive impact on membership and in more scouting opportunities for the youth in our communities. We've put a lot of resources to help you learn more at seascout.org slash cgox. One of the things you'll find there is a map that shows the location of all the Coast Guard Auxiliary flotillas in the country, along with their contact information, as well as the location of all the existing Sea Scout ships. It will help your council identify local flotillas and figure out what the opportunity for you is. I hope that this helps you get started working with the Coast Guard Auxiliary. If you still are not sure how to proceed, please contact your regional Commodore. If you're not sure who that is, you can find all of them on cscot.org slash program. Or if for some reason that doesn't work, please contact me, T.W. Cook, National Commodore, at T.W. Cook, T.W.C.O.O.K. at cscot.org. Thank you.